Welcome to day 221 of Shaped by the Word. We continue to work our way. Oh, by the way, I'm here with David Keefe. Hey, guys. Our executive pastor <laughs> and Sandy Kemp, my lovely wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, we continue to work our way through 1 Corinthians. Uh, today we come to one of the most challenging, one of the more difficult passages in 1 Corinthians. Uh, we need to remember what Paul is doing for us. Uh, he's taking the Corinthian church who... Uh, bringing many worldly attitudes into their worship and into their uh, interaction with each other. So he's challenged them, you know, about factions in the church. He's challenged them about sexual purity, you know, within the church. He's challenged them about the way that they, you know, relate to, you know, food sacrifice to idols and how to bear each other's conscience in mind. And so he brings, you know, chapter 10 to a wonderful, you know, close when he says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all, you know, to the glory of, you know, to the glory of God. And now he moves into their worship services themselves when they gather, you know, for worship. There is so much worldliness creeping into their worship service that he will actually say, I just don't have a whole lot of good things to say about your worship services. You're causing more harm than you're doing good, which is an incredibly tough indictment mm-hmm. you know, of the church or any group of people. So as we read this today, let, you know, let's keep that in mind, that God is bringing you know, a decent and beautiful order you know, to worship, and uh, that he is a father who you know, has our best at heart and our best interest in mind. So as we approach this passage, let's do so in submission to our Heavenly Father to hear what He wants to say to us, uh, to lay aside some of our baggage, to hear anew His encouragement to us to come into His presence to worship Him. Cindy, do you mind leading us in that prayer? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank You for this time in Your Word. And Lord, we do ask that as um, sometimes Your Word um, has difficult things for us to uh, to read and, and hear and understand, we would ask that by your spirit you would teach us. And Father, that our hearts would be open to um, to change, to letting go, to walking on and leaving behind whatever needs to be um, let go, Father, and that you would uh, teach us. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Chapter 11 begins with a phrase that uh, more properly fits up with uh, chapter 10. Follow my example as I, I follow the example of Christ. And of course, Paul had just said, I'm not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that we may all be saved. Now he comes into propri- you know, propriety and worship. I don't know why I can't say that word. <laughs> uh, I praise you, he says in verse 2, for remembering me in everything and for holding to the traditions just as I pass them on to you. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. A man ought to cover his head since he is a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God but woman is the glory of man for man did not come from woman but woman from man neither was man created for woman but woman for man it is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels nevertheless and the Lord woman is not independent of man nor is man independent of woman for as woman came from man so also man is born of woman but everything comes from God judge for yourself Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not the very nature of things teach that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. No doubt, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you're eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I see, for what I received from the Lord, what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should uh, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry uh, should eat something at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give you further instruction. A fairly dense, you know, chapter yeah. with mm-hmm. some customs, you know, that uh, seem a little bit strange to us. Uh, many of them, of course, you know, are part of that culture, but many of them are grounded in something that is far deeper, you know, than the culture. And for us, uh, we need to understand, you know, the depth of where, you know, God is leading us, what is grounded in the very nature of creation, the very nature of redemption and who he is, and some, you know, cultural expressions of that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think, you know, in, in our church, you know, uh, you know, I know one guy who has really long hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and according to this passage, he would be uh, dishonoring God. I don't know if, you know, one, one, of, one of our ladies who shaves her head, you know, very short. And according to this passage, if we take it, you know, literally, you know, she would uh, she would be dishonoring God. So we don't, you know, necessarily think of those examples as the heart of what this is teaching. We think it's okay, you know, for her to have short hair and we think it's okay for him to have long hair. But, but what's not okay? You know, from this passage, what are some of the things that are, are not okay? Well, definitely the dishonoring of Christ and the dishonoring yeah. of, of one another. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that when we do come together, um, regardless of any cultural context, you know, we want to make sure we're honoring Christ and that we're honoring each other. And that's going to vary in different cultures. And we see a little glimpse of how that looks in this culture. But definitely we're going to take that away from this passage. No, absolutely. In all of our worship, first of all, we want to honor Christ. And second of all, we want to honor each other. And of course, Mm -hmm. you know, while this is disguised with, you know, mention of men and women, the word for women here, you know, probably is is, is pointing to wives. And the one thing that's very necessary for wives in, in this culture is to not dishonor their head, which would be you know, their husbands. So he's not talking about women in general. Uh, he's talking about wives who have come into a marriage covenant and have entered into under the headship of Christ, the headship you know, of their husband. And of course, that is something, you know, that is something apart from the fall that is not at all threatening. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, once you have the fall, uh, we compete with each other for preeminence in our relationships. Apart from the fall and in redemption, uh, we compete with each other for building each other up in Christ and serving one another out of affection and love. Mm-hmm. So headship in the home should be the kind of headship that Christ exercises by uh, you know, loving the church and giving himself up for her in order to make her holy and blameless. Uh, and so headship has a very nurturing kind of characteristic to it where you take you know human you know, human relationships and fallen relationships and it, it can be very dominating and very and a very abusive and of course that's what many in our culture have experienced and that's what they're reacting to mm-hmm. when they read a passage you know like this I definitely just as a little joke gives me a little flashback to my first um, youth ministry position I wore a hat in the worship center and got yelled at so maybe my pastor is taking these verses a little too serious um but exactly what Paul is saying, especially in verse 11, which I really like, he says, Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. And we can kind of go back to creation and see, obviously, that God created us in his image, male and female. And so with men and women, we are equal in, mm-hmm. in value and in dignity and significance, but also differing roles at times mm-hmm. that, as we believe, complement each other. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and the thought came to mind too that, that it's just an idea of being interdependent. As I think you've even said that before, but just you know, acknowledging and respecting and living in unity over some of these things. 
as we'll go um, to look a little further when it comes to the Lord's Supper too. Yeah, and and it is not you know it is not a threat if there is a husband who is serving his wife the way that Christ served the church, Mm -hmm. and a wife that is honoring her husband the way that you know Christ honors the church. It is you know as as we've mentioned it is quite threatening. Mm You know, when fallenness enters the picture mm-hmm. and uh, when there is more, you know, a sense of competition mm-hmm. with each other than complementing each other right. and more a sense of dominating each other than building each other up, you know, in the Lord Jesus Christ, more of seeking your own good, you know, in your relationships than seeking, you know, the good of the others in relationships. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously we can see how, pe- how people would respond to this. And, and to our shame that we, we haven't shown them in the, in the church the perfection and the beauty mm-hmm. you know of this because too many times we bring our concepts of headship in from the culture rather than our concepts of headship in you know from what the gospel would have us you know what the gospel would have us do and be mm-hmm. for sure on that and then i guess we move to the lord's supper mm-hmm. um i i guess what we're reading here is they're uh mm-hmm. coming together what they think is the Lord's Supper, but really they're just having a big party and eating lots of food and, and potentially getting drunk and even neglecting those that are needy right, yeah. around them in light of, yeah. quote, doing the Lord's yeah, Supper. Probably the context, you know, the context you have is, you know, the, the Lord's Supper as they celebrated it or as they're bringing it over from Jewish Passover was really a meal. And the meal would begin mm-hmm. with the breaking and the blessing of the bread. Mm-hmm. And then you would eat the meal and then it would end, you know, with the blessing uh, of the cup. So it begins and it ends, you know, with the Lord's, you know, blessing. So you have people of high status in the church, mm-hmm. and evidently they're doing potlucks. And, and so all the high <laughs> status people get together over in the corner and said, let's enjoy our really good food together, you know, as, as a point of privilege and as a point of status. Mm-hmm. And the people of low status in the church would normally have been their servants. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Paul is saying, in this context, in this meal, those distinctions are gone. You're one in Christ, and the very fact that you dishonor, mm-hmm. you know, members of the body of Christ uh, by giving them second best, offering them places that are less than equal, you know, to yours, and of course, you know, they also have, you know, your overeating and your over drinking mm-hmm. and these and none of this is honoring god it reminds me of when i was a teenager before we would go over into you know, someone's house for dinner mom would always make me eat a peanut butter sandwich because <laughs> she knew i would eat too much you know where go. so that's what there. paul is saying he said if you want to do this kind of stuff don't do it in the body of christ it have a banquet at home, but here we're all equal in Christ. And I think, can and, and that's what he's talking about when he said, you know, if you do this, you're bringing judgment on yourself mm-hmm. that you're dishonoring other members. You know, you're not dishonoring other you know, members of the body. That's unworthy because you've elevated yourself above others. Yeah. At, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say, yeah. verse 22, gosh. This is the kind of so competition convicting. I was I know. talking about yeah, let me talk. <laughs> I mean, when you have yeah. worldly attitudes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, this is so humbling in 22, where he says, don't you have homes to eat and drink in, or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? Wow, yeah. wow so convicting. But yeah, that's what was going on. Was so, many ways, so many ways we can do that yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And that's going on as they're reflecting on you know, the yeah. death of Christ. Well, he's already if said it. Are, it's yeah. not the Lord's Supper. Yeah, but yeah. whatever they're thinking, you guys are yeah. doing. They're not reflecting. Yeah, you may but, have a yeah. blessing at the beginning. You may have yeah. a blessing at the end. Mm. Um, but this is not the Lord's table because the Lord's table brings people together yeah. and honors and, and honors all people. Mm-hmm. And then just down in twenty, um, I guess it's twenty-eight. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. So I would imagine that, you know, as they're turning their hearts, they would be examining themselves at that point and reflecting on what Christ has done. Isn't verse 29 a wonderful play on words? Mm -hmm. Without discerning the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So you have a play on words there because, you know, the bread and the wine are symbols of his body and his blood. Mm -hmm. But what they're doing is Mm -hmm. not remembering the broad you know, the broader Mm -hmm. body Body. of Christ Mm -hmm. and discerning that they are all one in Christ. Mm -hmm. And and so what should really happen is those of high status, if you really want to celebrate this Mm -hmm. in a biblical way, should be serving those of low status and the tables should be reversed uh, in the presence of the Lord. 
Yeah, and you even see that with Jesus when he takes his disciples to the upper room. Obviously, he breaks the bread and, and mm-hmm. they drink from the cup, but he washes their feet first, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the, the God man humbles himself and serves the lowly yeah. and sets that example for us. And right. obviously, Paul wants them to do that example as well. Yeah. yeah. So it makes me excited for the next time we actually do get to celebrate the Lord's yeah, table, absolutely. you know, mm-hmm. apart from all the COVID scares and restrictions that we have right now to get together and in banquet form, mm-hmm. celebrating the goodness of God as one people mm-hmm. in, in the presence uh, of the Lord. David, do you mind uh, closing us with a word of prayer? No, let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much um, for the reminder um, that as we gather, we definitely want to honor you and we want to honor one another. And Father, forgive us for the times that we have just walked into your gathering not considering you and not considering each other um father we do as paul has said we, we long for the day when we will get to gather again and and remember um the body of christ and the blood of christ and, and until then may we be found honoring each other may we be found serving each other as we reflect on how you have served us and so thank you so much for the example of christ laid before us may we look to him and may you um, in your grace, through your spirit, and empower us to live in such a way that honors him. And we pray this all in the great and the wonderful name of Christ. Amen. Amen.